Hey guys, so I have been a PHP developer for about five or six years now, and in that time I've worked for a number of companies and also interviewed uh, at quite a few different places um, and also have interviewed quite a number of people. So one of the things I wanted to do for kind of up-and-coming PHP developers or people who have even been doing it for a while and maybe have, are looking for work and have an interview coming up is compile a list of, of common kind of job interview questions that you're probably going to run into while being interviewed. Um, and this list is by no means extensive, but I think in almost all situations you're going to at least see um, a lot of these questions, if not all of them. So um, I kind of want to just run through them quickly and hit any pinpoints that we might run into. Um, there's also a link below the video there. If you want to click on it, you can actually just review them yourselves. Um, and for any, for any up-and-coming PHP developers, also feel free to... Uh, re out, reach out to me for any reason if you have questions or just want to get in touch. Um, I run a company, Woodstitch Development, and we're always looking to kind of network with some developers and um, and basically expand our company. So yeah. Um, but anyways, I'll jump right into it. Um, to start out, um, uh, one of the questions I get from a lot of companies just right off the bat is kind of what what's object oriented programming? Kind of what's your understanding of it? What have what kind of have you done with it and this isn't really a too technical question so I frankly I'd just be as honest as possible um, kind of make sure you hit on the the big parts of object-oriented programming if you're a PHP developer and you're not familiar with it this is an area you really need to familiarize yourself with um, I mean in this market you're probably not going to find a job if, if you don't understand um, object-oriented programming but basically hit the basics kind of classes interface abstract classes um, kind of in inheritance, multiple inheritance, which PHP doesn't support, but um, just just know all, all kind of the object-oriented things um, and kind of talk about how that's different from procedural and if you were around during the procedural times, kind of maybe potentially how that shift to object-oriented helped, helped your programming. Um, so next, uh, what's the difference between a class and an interface? Um, so that's a pretty simple one in my opinion. Just so an interface is basically a contract um, that any class that implements an interface must have the method that was defined in that interface. So you check out the link or just Google interface if you're not familiar with it. Um, and if you haven't worked with it, I would say tr try to build a small system so you can kind of understand um, how and why you might use an interface. Um, and then this question I always get, what is MVC? Most companies work on some sort of framework that's, that's kind of based around the MVC architecture, usually either Zend or Symfony or, or Cake PHP or kind of one of the bigger ones, but basically model view controller. The model usually contains the business logic, any data access logic. Um, the view is, is basically just the HTML or, or whatever markup language you're using, XML, JSON potentially. Um, then the controller just has a little bit of code that kind of ties those two things together. Um, so if you want, you can talk about kind of the advantages of using MVC versus, versus not using it and, uh, and other stuff like that. Um, I, think, um, I think almost any place you go is going to ask you that question. Uh, but moving on, explain how PHP session works. So, um, generally speaking, they're they're just looking for kind of your understanding of a, of the session start function and how the client um, and browser kind of work back and forth with that. So just kind of know that the PHP sets a session cookie in the in the browser, and every time the browser makes a request to the to the server it sends that cookie along with it so PHP is then able to kind of look and say okay we have this unique cookie now we'll pull the file that corresponds with that cookie or you can also store your sessions in the database and whatnot so kind of have an understanding of how sessions work and what they're about um, what are some of the big changes PHP has gone through in the past few years I've got this at every company I've applied for um, so the, the I think the big ones they're really looking for is the 5.0 release kind of release with the object oriented model and the other thing is um, I've seen this sometimes they, they're looking for added PDO support but usually they just want like three decent 
kind of answers. And um, also namespacing came with PHP 5.3. Um, then what is the difference between get and post? So this is another common question, and it can be it's it's a good question for an interviewer to ask because <coughs> it really gives them a good uh, understanding of kind of where you as a developer are as far as understanding the whole HTTP protocol um, and kind of the request and response and how those work. Um, so don't just say don't just say uh, well, the get variable um, is is holds an array of of the query string parameters passed from a form. That's just not that's kind of a a, lo a very shallow understanding of it. Try and talk more about kind of how the HTTP protocol, what a request looks like, what a re the the request sends a header called a method, kind of what those generally can be generally either get post put delete so talk a little bit about that and um, and yeah study up on HTTP the protocol you, you could potentially get some more questions around there um, I might do another session just focusing purely on kind of the HTTP proto protocol kind of questions that you might get uh, in a job interview um, so uh, what are the three visibility keywords in the keywords of a property or a method um, so in a class keyword uh, properties or methods can have a public protected or private so just know how those differ um, that one gets asked often what is polymorphism this is kind of a funny one I think it's a big word so people like to ask it for, for whatever the reason um, it's kind of uh, it can be kind of an abstract concept but I think to, to, to in, in its simplest form, it's just the idea that um, one object can take on many forms. So if we have a, a class called cars, and we have uh, a Honda class that extends cars, and a BMW class that extends cars, and they both have a method called drive, but the Honda might drive differently than the BMW, that's kind of the, the idea of polymorphism. Um, so So both both BMWs and Hondas are a type of cars, but they have um, the same name of the, the method that's the same name, but it can it can act differently. But um, but yeah, so that's kind of the idea around polymorphism. Um, and then how do you load classes in PHP? So so generally speaking, they they kind of want to make sure that you're not so new that you're just like re including or requiring. All the all the class files that you're actually using PHP's auto load function. Um, so look into the auto load function and how that works. And you should actually probably be using the SPL auto load register function. It just allows you more flexibility with loading your classes. Um, so what is the value of day in the below code? And this is actually not so much so you can identify the value, but it's really they. For other reason, companies always like to see that you know how to use the the ter ternary operator, um, and I actually don't use that too much in my own development, just personally. But for other reason, it's a very common question, and it's basically just an if else. So here we say day equals, then you have a condition Wednesday equals one, and that equals true. And if it's true, uh, it's th it's the first parameter. If it's false, it's the second one. So in this scenario, it's true today. Um, then what is the scope resolution operator? Um, so a scope resolution operator is different than a little arrow operator. This, the, the scope resolution actually calls static methods, so you don't need to instantiate a class before using it. Um, so yeah, that's that. You can look in a little more into it in the links below. Uh, what are some PHP design patterns you've worked with? So um, a lot of companies will, some companies have asked this, some others haven't. It just kind of def depends if they work with very various PHP design patterns but um, it's the kind of thing where you really have had to work with them to be able to explain them but if you haven't I would just try and get a grasp of a couple um, the one big one's a singleton pattern most companies use that um, the strategy pattern is also another common one so if you kind of just know two and can talk about them to any level of extent that's usually a pretty good sign what is the difference between single quotes and double quotes um, it gets a little tricky in PHP. Take a look at this link and 
and kind of get the the basics down. What does object start do? Um, so, or, or OB start do? Uh, and this is an interesting one, but I see it a lot because the a lot of um, big frameworks like Symphony or Zend will actually wrap all of their code inside of object start. So basically, what it does is it just um, it stops the output buffering. So basically it stops PHP from outputting anything until you call object get clean. But so it allows you to like, for example, include a bunch of HTML files and then go through and parse those files and do whatever before you're actually outputting the uh, outputting anything. So that's good to know. Um, what does the and mean in and variable? So that this is just the, the reference operator. Um, you should have a general understanding of references and how they're used in PHP. So check out that link below. What is the meaning of a final class and final method? So the final keyword is pretty simple. It just means you can't extend that that um, that class or method. So if you try to, PHP will throw an error. Um, does PHP support multiple inheritance? No. So it does not. So multiple inheritance is just the notion that one class could um, extend two parent class classes, which in other languages, I understand some other languages like C sharp, um, um, classes can do that, but in PHP, there's not really a reason for that. If you run in that situation, you're probably <coughs> doing something wrong. So uh, what are some magic methods, methods in PHP and how might you use them? Uh, personally, I'm not crazy about magic methods because I don't like anything magic happening in my code, but some magic methods, for example, are get and set, and so Basically, um, magic method methods. What they are is some some method that gets triggered when an event happens. So the get method gets triggered when you are setting a property um, of an object, or sorry, rather when you're getting a pro pro property of an object. And set it happens when you set a property of an object. The reason I don't like them too much is because let's say you're setting a, a property in an object, and this method gets called and does something funky. Um, you'll you'll you don't really know that that funky thing has happened so and you don't want to have to always kind of be thinking about oh could there be a magic method that's doing something um, that's getting triggered here but anyways so be, be careful about using them uh, are objects in PHP 5 passed by value or reference so there's there's really no um, this is basically a trick question um, so what what the person who's interviewing for you is looking of an understanding of how um, when an object is instantiated it's actually instantiated so try to try to understand that it's funny because when you pass an object it can appear as though it's being passed by reference because if you change a, a prop a property of the object um, it it will change as though it has been passed by a reference um, because because objects um, well, just to, to t take a look, <laughs> I won't go into it right now, but take a look at kind of the link below and see if you can get an understanding of that. Um, and then what is the difference between var and var with the um, double dollar sign in front? And that's it's pretty simple. It's basically just um, a variable of a variable. So you can look more again at the link below. But anyways, guys, hope this helps. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions or comments um, about these or if I misstated anything. And also just feel free to get in touch with me for any reason. Um, thanks and bye for now.